Well, I was just relaxing on the sofa yesterday and I was just streaming on my phone and I came across a video by GC Performance and he's a YouTuber out there in Florida, USA and he does some pretty good content. He does some walk arounds of new bikes because he's got a bike shop and then he does a wheel spin so you get to hear the free hub. He weighs the bike so you get to know what these bikes are, these production bikes are in the real world, not from a spec sheet. So you're getting to see what's on them. He shows you what components are on them, what the paint's like. Although, you know, you're seeing it over YouTube, so the color may not be absolutely accurate, but he explains the color, explains the seats that are fitted, the rims that are fitted, all of the stuff that's fitted on the bike. So he does a pretty good package of explaining to you what you're gonna get when you buy one of these models. So he's doing a pretty good job over there. Now, he managed to have access to a Pinarello F and this particular one was a rim brake and he was claiming this is one of about 20 in the US and of course being a rim brake bike people had a few comments about the rim brake and one that kind of triggered me a little bit was the same old story we get with the disc brakes why would you buy that bike it looks it, you can see the cables and disc brakes break much better so I'm going to challenge that in this video so let's roll an intro and let's dig a little bit deeper and see if I can kind of explain it in a logical sense why having disc brakes and having even more powerful brakes whether they be disc brakes or rim brakes will not stop you quicker Well, I think the problem why people can't get this whole braking thing into their heads is because they keep referring to this word power. They, they think that because it's hydraulically assisted and the hydraulics gives you like a, a, a geared up or a leverage effect because what you're putting here, the way the hydraulics designed, is a lot of movement gives a small movement at the disc so you're getting a lot more force but over a smaller movement it's like it's basically like a lever if i get a longer lever and i get it's not apply more force when i have the other end close to the fulcrum we we'll learned that in high school so they seem to think that because they've got a longer stick it's going to make the bike brake quicker and they think this relates to and when you ride a disc brake because it's hydraulic assisted it feels much much easier to brake so it feels like it's got more effectiveness when you're stopping because you just can just pull it lightly and for people that have arthritis or problems with their hands hydraulically assisted disc brakes are a fantastic thing it allows them to ride and they don't have to apply as much force to the brakes but this gives this perception in people's heads that the brakes are going to stop quicker and this is like completely false and let's just have a look at why that is Now, when you have a vehicle, then you have a number of physical factors related to that vehicle. You have the weight of the vehicle, you have the contact patch of the tire, you have the traction between the tire and the road, and you have basically a rotating effect around the front axle. And all these things contribute to the vehicle stopping. So if you put more weight, if you've got a car and you put more weight in it, it's probably going to take a longer distance to stop than if you make it lighter with the same braking system, same tyres, everything else remains equal. So these sorts of things affect the braking distance and this is the same with a push bike. Now, let's just take a car for instance and if we take a car that and we have two, basically two cars that are exactly the same except one has hydraulically assisted brakes and one doesn't and you get into that car and you brake the two cars, the hydraulically assisted brake is going to feel a lot easier to push. It's going to feel like the brakes are stronger. But when you stop and you don't lock up the wheels, you, you take it to the point where it's almost locked up, but it's not locked up, then you will stop the two cars in exactly the same distance. So having the hydraulically assisted brake pedal doesn't help you stop the car any quicker. All it does is just make the pedal easier to press 
for the same braking force. So the power applied to, or what we feel the power is in the system that's assisting the brakes, it actually doesn't help the, the car stop any quicker. Now this applies to bicycles as well. So if we have a rim brake bike and we have a disc brake bike, and these are two completely separate braking systems, the rim brake bike is capable of lifting the back wheel if you pull those brake levers hard enough. So if you're on a hydraulic, a hydraulic disc brake bike and you pull the levers, you can lift the back wheel. If you're on a rim brake bike with good quality carbon pads, carbon wheels, and you break the bike, you can lift the back wheel. You can lift the back wheel in both instances. The brakes are beyond the physical braking ability of the bike. They're not below, all right? So therefore, the brakes in both instances are capable of outbreaking the physical limitations of the bike stopping in the minimal distance. So if I continue, if I'm riding along and I'm on a ring brake bike and I grab a handful and pull the brakes as hard as I can, at some point the back wheel is going to start to lift on me. And if I keep pulling harder and harder, I'm going to go over the handlebars. And we've probably, if we've ridden for some time, we've probably experienced this or have or nearly have gone over the handlebars. Now on a disc brake bike, it's it's easier to pull the handles and it's easier to apply more force, but it's the same thing. If I have, grab a handful, I'm going to then lift the back wheel again and I'm going to go over the handlebars. So the result of over braking on a rim brake bike or a disc brake bike is going to have the same result. You're going to go over the handlebars. Okay, so we know we don't want to go over the handlebars, so we don't want to face plant the asphalt. So what we're going to do is, is when we feel that back wheel lifting, we back off the brake. So we just want to keep that back wheel very light or just slightly off the ground. And then we, we keep it at that point to get the minimum braking distance. And whether you're on a rim brake bike or on a disc brake bike, that physical limitation is identical if the bike is the same bike you're the same weight same person everything riding that bike the power of the bike the the disc brake the different design of the bike or the power of the hydraulics doesn't allow you to stop the bike any quicker it's exactly the same distance Now, whether the advantage of disc brakes come in is because the disc brake is mounted at the hub of the bike and the rim brake is mounted at the, the outskirts of the, the, the rim, then the rim brake is more prone to contamination than the disc brake is. So if you're riding in conditions where there's a lot of dirt or a lot of muck and it's been raining and the surface, the rim brake surface is getting contaminated, then the disc brake, because it's further away from the rim, is going to get less contaminated, and so the disc brake is going to give you a more consistent and effective braking. And that's not got to do with the system being more powerful, that's just got to do with where the braking system is and its limitations to getting contamination on the braking surface, because the disc brake gets less contamination because it's further away from the roads, further away from the tires, further away from the rim, whilst a rim brake is right next to the tyre, it's right next to the surface of the road, and the contamination is a lot more easier to get onto the braking surface. And we've seen this if we've ridden rim brakes in poor conditions, all the muck and slime and everything gets all on the braking surface, whilst we have a disc brake, it stays a lot cleaner. So when we're talking about inclement conditions or conditions where contamination can get onto the braking surface, disc brakes are superior. But my question to that is, if you want the ultimate bike, which a rim brake is because it can be made lighter and you're gonna ride it in the dry because you don't wanna ride your 15,000 or $20,000 US bike in the rain, which I personally wouldn't if I spent that much on a bike, I'd have a rain bike if I can afford that much for a bike, then why do I care about road contamination on my disc brakes? Because it's not my commuter bike, it's not my everyday bike that I just ride around in crappy weather. I may not even be a like to ride in the rain, I might be a fair weather cyclist, so I might not even ride in the rain. So why do you need to worry about having disc brakes on your bike? So guys, that's in a, in a nutshell. 
And I really can't understand why it's so difficult for people to understand that. And even when you buy a performance car and they get bigger discs and bigger brakes on the car, the car doesn't stop any quicker. All that bigger brake does is reduce fade. Like if you, if you stop the cars next to each other, if they're the same weight, right, because sometimes the performance cars are a bit lighter, but um, if they're the same weight, you're going to stop in exactly the same time, even though they've got bigger disc brakes. All the bigger disc brake does is if you take it to a track or you're riding in the mountains, sorry, driving in the mountains and you're braking consistently, then what's going to happen is you're not going to have brake fade because that bigger disc can dissipate the heat better. That's all that bigger disc does. It doesn't make you stop any quicker because the weight of the car, the tyres, the tyre surface, everything like that remains the same. The limitations of stopping that car as fast as you can remain the same. So guys, that's it for this video. And uh, I, I really hope that that explains it and people can get that through their head because I don't know where people get this disc brake stops quicker from. In fact, I actually have not read or seen any manufacturer state that verbally or in writing in any documentation. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. Leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next vid.